The Waterfowl Breeding Population and Habitat Survey and Waterfowl Status Report are the result of a collaborative effort conducted annually by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Canadian Wildlife Service, and the Atlantic, Mississippi, Central, and Pacific Flyway Councils. Well, Frank. I tell you what, I was really surprised. Uh, total ducks stayed virtually unchanged from last year, and as you know, the prairies have been in a pretty dry conditions, and, and last year was I thought we were going to have lousy production, so that's the biggest surprise to me is duck numbers stayed relatively constant. Yeah, and I mean, we saw a significant decline in May ponds in, in across all the survey areas. Declines in southern Alberta, declines in southern Saskatchewan, southern Manitoba, Montana and the western Dakotas, and even the eastern Dakotas, which yep. have been sort of the lone wet place here for a long time. Uh, I mean, we, you know, about a million pond drop year over year, 20% yeah. below the long-term average. Um, I guess I was, this. I expected the pond count. Right. I didn't expect the duck, duck count. I agree. And so I think the pond count is, is dangerously low. And so I don't expect to have great duck production, right. but I didn't expect duck numbers to maintain constant after last year's dry conditions. So something's going on that, that we aren't capturing. Maybe boreal and arctic nesting is doing better than, than we thought. But, and it's a little surprising that, that three or four species, you know, key species for guys in the deep south, green wings, gadwall, are well above long-term averages still, which is when we have half the pond numbers we had when we reached peak duck peak numbers. Peak duck numbers, yeah. And that's pretty surprising. Mallards hanging in there Mallards really hanging pretty in. nicely. Yeah. Uh, pintails had a little modest year-over-year -year increase, still way below long-term average, but up a little bit from last year. That's right, and that, that's a surprise. I mean, right. how did pintails do that well? And again, I think it might be Arctic breeding we've underestimated. So, yeah. You know, the other thing I think that we talked about when we were looking at the 2024 breeding season, I think we were hopeful that there were gonna be pockets of good production in the Eastern yeah. Dakotas, had some timely rains. We won't know until we see age ratios here in the next week and be right. sort of interesting to go through that too. Um, I. I imagine that with as dry as Prairie Canada was and as dry as other places were, that we would wash out that positive signal, but maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't, yeah. And and this year with the with the late rains and some areas the Dakotas getting slightly better than they were at the at the start, we might have stronger renesting and better brood survival than we thought. So yeah. So, and, you know, you get reports yeah. from places like southern Alberta that we know yeah. has been really dry for a yeah. really long time. And it's done almost nothing but rain in southern Alberta right. since June right. 20th. So right. did we get a little rest, re-nesting? Did we get yeah. some duckling survival? Yeah. And more probably, more importantly for that part of the world, did we set the table for the 26th breeding yeah. season? Right. And, and uh, you know, one of the downsides is blue wings were down again, yep. and and that means that it, it's very likely we're going to get another short teal season. And and being a guy that hunted Louisiana teal seasons a lot, those are super valuable. And a nine day important. season is is you know it's just too short, and so that's unfortunate. Now maybe by next year blue wings will recover because the one really bright spot on the prairies when you look at the map it was oh it's a lot of red and red, yellow, yeah. not the colors we want to see, but but. The eastern South Dakota was really wet, and, right. and blueings tending to settle from south to north. That might be a good, good thing for duck production. So blueings might be up next year. Well, your favorite duck. I know you're a big lover of bluebells. <laughs> um, I'm, yeah. I'm a little worried about that number. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. I haven't had a chance to digest it. I'm not good enough at math yeah. to run the models, but that's right. getting to be a scary low number. And the thing that's interesting about bluebells is the eastern Dakotas have sort of been fortress bluebell for the last 20 years with yeah. abundant CRP, right. good moisture, and that seems to have fallen that's, apart. That's gone. I yeah. mean, we're 40% below, you know, where we should be in the eastern Dakotas, and so that's tough. Yeah. So so we're, we're again relying on the boreal forest for, for bluebills, and that hasn't been a good recipe. Right. So, yeah. Well, there'll be more analysis to come, but I think both Frank and I were a little shocked and amazed, pleased, 
It's, yeah. I mean, I certainly wasn't pleased to see the pond number, but it yeah. pleased to see ducks faring a little better than I think any of us. Have I completely believed. agree. I mean, this just shows that ducks are pretty doggone resilient. We had a liberal season, and that didn't make a bit of difference. We we maintained duck populations in the face of pretty dry conditions. So, yeah. so that's a good sign.